first day of practice for you guys, and in particular, you able to watch any of the quarterbacks and, and how they able to really perform today? You know, we'll be able to go back and watch the film to evaluate how they really performed. But overall, I thought it was a good start. Uh, just a start, but I thought the tempo was good. The guys were moving around. They were doing the little things right. Looks like it's good retention from the summer. Some of the young guys uh, flashed a little bit. I know Travis said he broke some runs today, and it was good to see him move around. But at the same time, he had some opportunities to get better. Uh, it's only day one of installation. We're moving fast. Coach is, coach is not going to keep us on the field long, so we're moving fast. So we got to do a lot of coaching off tape. So we'll know how we really practice after we get in this out this evening and watch the film. Coach Sweeney was telling us about how excited those guys are to have their opportunity now. Wayne's finally gone. Is that, is that what you're sensing from them on the field? No question. This, this is probably the best competition that, that I've had since I've been here. There's three guys that legitimately any one of them can end up being the starting tailback. And, and by the looks of it, there's going to be a little bit of pressure put on by the freshman, too. He just looks very, very natural back there. But, you know, they know what it takes to be the starter. You know, that's the positive as they saw Wayne do it for two years. They know the expectation in practice. They know the expectation to play uh, in the games. And I think they're all capable. And now we just got to see who wants it the most in practice. Are you guys completely opposed to splitting between two 50-50? Is there going to be a true starter 100%? Talking about a running back? Yeah. You know, it, it, it's up to them. It just depends. Uh, you know, we went into it uh, when Wayne was a freshman. It was kind of 50-50 with him and Choice. And then Wayne, uh, you know, kind of separated. Unfortunately, Choice got hurt. And then nobody was able to catch him while he's here. So it's really going to be up to them. You know, right now, as we went, came out of the spring, all three of those guys will play and play significantly. But hopefully someone will, will take the lead. If not, then we'll, we'll do it by committee. How much did you see improvement from Tavian in terms of, like, the things that you're looking to see in every down back, pass protection, blitz pickup, that kind of stuff? You know, it's hard to tell that because we're not in pads yet. Uh, obviously, today. We're, we're just in helmets and shorts, and so everybody's flying around. You can't really see the physicality of it yet. So pass protection is very, very difficult to assess. Again, got to watch the film. I did notice that he did have a better sense of urgency. It looks like he's paying more attention to the little things. Uh, he's just growing up. He's mature, and I think his body feels good. He's carrying the, the, the extra weight a lot better uh, than I anticipated. Um, and so I'm excited to see how he's going to progress. But I did notice he was doing the little things better. What are some of the little things you're looking for out of a guy who you look to start and get the bulk of the carries perhaps early on? You know, just the attention to detail and, and, and the things I ask him to do before he gets to the line of scrimmage. My job as a coach is to make sure that they're on track, they're in phase with the offensive line, and the timing is right. And then once they get to that second level, then their natural ability takes over. And that's one of the hardest things for a running back is to have that level of, of detail prior to the line of scrimmage and then let your athleticism take over. And then in pass protection, just the knowledge and, and the willingness to go in there and give up their life and their body for the quarterback. I thought I saw Blake Vincent running with the twos at tackle. Is that the case? And uh, what, what are your impressions of him so far? You know, I was I was very impressed coming out of spring with uh, with Blake Vincent, the guy that was coming out of high school, came in early, and and uh, and I know that this extra time in the in the off season in the weight room, his confidence is up, and I'm a, I'm anxious to see because he was a guy that really flashed in the spring, and we're hoping that it can carry to give us some more depth at tackle. How do you guys handle the tempo today? I saw several times early on that you were screaming tempo, tempo, and obviously you guys are looking to find some new starters at the skill position spot. So how do you think these guys are handling that so far? I know it's just really day you know, one. It's day one, and, and obviously they're, they're fired up, they're anxious, and so they were moving around well. Uh, we we base it off of, of the time that we have allotted in each practice period on are we able to get the number of the number of snaps. I thought I thought early with the second group when we did a tempo on air, you know, it wasn't quite as fast as I wanted, but as practice went on, they got better. Uh, you saw them doing the little things chasing away from the ball, just the things that a, that a veteran football team, you know, takes ownership about, which makes them potentially championship teams. These guys have been together all summer long. Have you seen anybody emerge as that vocal leader so far? You know, that's that's a good question. I, I wish I was with them every day. See, we're, we're, as coaches, we're not allowed to be around them, but just the reports that we get from, from the strength coach, it looks like a couple of guys in the offensive line are emerging. Uh, you know, the running backs, uh, Wayne wasn't a vocal guy. I don't have a guy that's very, very vocal, but they're all working uh, uh, from, from a leadership standpoint, hoping that, you know, as we get into camp, guys like Dion and Ray Ray will be a little bit more vocal as they continue to consistently practice and perform. In the spring, it looked like Hunter did a really good job of sort of taking what he learned on film and bringing it out. And, and so the more time he had to kind of process, the better he'd look out of the field. As he's gone through this whole summer, did he come out and feel, you know, and you're talking to him and seeing him in practice, that he's made a step since since you last saw him out yeah, of practice? From my perspective, because I'm working with the backs, uh, I noticed that he just, he just, his demeanor looked a lot more confident. He just looked a lot more comfortable. Uh, nothing looked like it overwhelmed him, so that's a positive there. We'll go back on the film, and then once we, we sit down as a staff, slow it down, watch it play by play, analyze every every person on every play, then we'll understand and know uh, if he's been able to retain that and bring it uh, from the summer. Did anybody surprise you yesterday at the weigh-in? 
just the whole the whole team in general. Uh, you didn't see any guys up there, and we have some guys that are, that are bigger guys. You look at like a, a Tyrone Crowder and a Taylor Hearn. You know, those are 300 plus pound guys, but they don't look like it. I mean, all these guys were lean. They were in shape. You know, C.J. Fuller was a guy that trimmed down his body, so you can tell that maturity is really starting to kick in. You know, Taven when he took the, took his shirt off, I was anxious to see how he looked, and you know, he held his, his 220 pounds well. But just overall, really, really good, lean, strong, physical looking football team. You know, Shadell was a guy that, that we made a decision to move from wide out, and so you know from a passing standpoint, he's very, very smooth. He creates that matchup. Biggest thing for him is, is he needed to put on some weight. So going back to the previous question, that was a guy that surprised me. He weighed in about 230 pounds, so you can see that he's really taking ownership on putting uh, putting on the weight. The biggest challenge for him is just going to be the physicality of playing in the box. Obviously, we would like those guys to be in that 250. 260 pound range because they're blocking defensive ends that are 270, 280 pounds. So just as he progresses, we know what he can give us in the passing game. He's willing enough. He tries to be physical, but he just has to let his body catch up so he can give us that physical presence at the point of attack when we ask him to be in the box as a two-back uh, two back fitter in our ring game. Your thoughts on Kelly Bryant and, and how he came in today and looked a little loose and confident mm -hmm. out there uh, when he was coming out. Uh, can you talk about him and what you saw? You know, same thing with Hunter. Just saw a confident demeanor about himself. Uh, it's day one, so, so so again, this is just a repeat of what we did the first day of spring. They've been doing it all summer. You know, so the real test is going to be as we start piling up the days because unlike spring, there's no break in between. So every single day there's going to be, you know, different installation. And this is the time of season where we build the whole package where we may only work on, you know, certain parts of it in the spring with 15 practices. But the ball looked like it was coming out of his hand. It was where it needed to be. All the decisions looked like they were the right decisions. His confidence was there. So I'm pulled a couple times. So I'm anxious to see on the tape to, to validate what I thought I saw from the sideline. You know, in the, in the spring, it's still so recent that the shadow of Deshaun can kind of loom a little bit large. Do you get a sense from those quarterbacks that like just having a chance to kind of do things their way over an offseason gives them that kind of chance to step out of that shadow and be a little more confident and be themselves a little bit more? You know, I think it's like like most of the positions that had had one of those players that, that transitioned to the, to the next level of graduated. It's their time. You know, so I don't know if it's necessarily to do it their way, but they know it's their time. And if they want to, if they want to, to take advantage of that opportunity, the only they have to play within the system, but then they also have to be loose. They have to play within their game and be confident and go out and execute. And I think Kelly, you know, is a guy that knows he's capable. He just has to go out and do it. What did you see from the freshman receivers out there today? Freshman receivers, you know, I thought Amari really caught my attention. Uh, I think everyone, you know, knows what T is, and T is going to be an unbelievable player. You saw him make some catches. He's just a, the combination of size. He was a guy, his weight was something that, that surprised me from the, from the way and didn't realize he was that, you know, he was that big, uh, very smooth. But Amari probably would be the one that, that caught my attention the most. He just looked very natural, very smooth. Um, especially with, with railway situation, he got a lot of reps today. Chase Bryce didn't come in until July. Can he make this a, a four a four man race? You know, that's that's something that we're anxious to see. Uh, it just depends on how fast he can process it. Uh, from my perspective, when I saw him going there, he didn't look overwhelmed. But again, that's day one, and we already have seven days in a row of installation plans. So we'll see him. And then after we finish those seven days, we'll regroup and we'll probably have two more days of installation throughout the course of camp. So really, it's just to turn on how fast he can process it and can he bridge that gap. That, like you said, in the summer, those guys were here in the spring. They were here in the summer. So they had that time to go through it. Now this is their second time through, and this is just his first. With Trevor Lawrence, Avery Thomas sitting in their financial aid agreements, how big is it for y'all to have them locked down officially? You know, it's 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 a uh, comforting as a as a recruiter. I know for those guys that are recruiting them, but still, we gotta recruit those guys as if they haven't signed, uh, because again, it's still a long way till signing day. But but that just shows the commitment on our part to them, and that also shows the commitment, you know, on their part that they're committed to us. And so now, uh, with the dead period, we'll continue to recruit them hard within the rules. Uh, but now it's really time for us to focus on what we got here, and then once we get back into September, we'll have those guys back on campus and, and continue to recruit them. Now, now that you can talk about him, Brendan Galloway is another guy that mm -hmm. submitted his. Uh, FA, what have you? What did you see from him that? cause you guys to offer him? You know, it just reminds you a lot of, of Jordan Leggett in high school. Just that big, athletic guy uh, still trying to figure out his body, but he can run, he can catch, and if you've seen him here lately, I mean, he looks he looks the part. Um, he looks like he's a little bit more physically developed than, than where Jordan was when he was coming out of high school. He's already 235 pounds, I think, and so he gives you that that that, that matchup nightmare at that position because he's going to be big enough and physical enough to be in the box, but then he's going to split out as a wide and he's going to create that matchup, not just on, on linebackers, but 
he's going to create that matchup on safeties. You guys obviously have the number one quarterback from 2017 out here competing for a job. And how much of when you talk to Trevor, his willingness to kind of say, I don't, I don't care if there's already a number one quor quarterback recruit here. I'm, I want to go there anyway. I'm, does that kind of tell you something about the yeah, guys? Those, those are conversations that Coach Streeter you know, has because he's, the, he's the, the primary recruiter and his position coach. But that just says that that, that competition is, is, is what he's looking for. Yeah. The competition brings out the best in everybody. And it's the same thing, you know, with Hunter here. You know, he's not worried about a guy that's not here because he knows that those guys on this practice field that he's got to compete with. But I think that's what's really elevated our, our program to the level that it's at is the competition that they have every single day on this practice field. I know you kind of talked about that every bunch of 